Hi, and welcome to the Rare Business Podcast. My name is Adrian Swinsko, and I'm a consultant, advisor, researcher, and writer on all things related to customer service and customer experience. Through this podcast, I seek out and interview CEOs, entrepreneurs, business and tech leaders, and leading thinkers about what it takes to build organizations that produce better outcomes for both customers and employees in this fast-moving modern age that we live in. If this is your first time listening to one of these interviews, then welcome. And please do dive into the archives at adrianswinsko.com, as I've now completed over 250 of these interviews in the last few years. If this is not your first time listening, then thank you for returning, and I'll aim to do a good enough job to keep you coming back week after week. Anyway, that's enough from me right now. Let's get into the interview. Hello and welcome to the Rare Business Podcast. Today I have with me today, well actually today, I have with me Alex Jenoff, who is Head of Customer Research at Zappos here in Las Vegas. Hi Alex, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi Adrian, good to be with you. So Alex, for the benefit of our like listeners and readers, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about the work that you do? Sure, sure, Adrian. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, and so I'm um, heading up customer research for Zappos. We are a group within Zappos that um, try to understand our customers as people. Mm-hmm. And we work hand in hand with another group that handles big data okay. and transactions. And we are kind of uh, fit like a, like a puzzle together, right? Okay. We, we complement each other in terms of the big data and then we provide insights into how people think, what they feel, we do a lot of uh, surveys for that. We do a lot of different kinds of research. You can call it small data maybe. Mm-hmm. It's uh, quantitative, it mm-hmm. can be qualitative. Um, it's all solid, valid research. Um, and that's what we do uh, for Zappos here. Uh, my background is in uh, experimental social psychology, and that kind of to a, that to a lot of, to a big extent forms my views and my my approach, which is uh, focusing on emotions mm-hmm. and studying them and understanding how they get generated, how you can measure them in a valid way, and also individual differences, okay. and that kind of forms the foundation of approaching things like personalization. Um, like understanding customer needs. Um, it's always starting with how well do you know your customer. Sure. And if you have a large enough customer base, you can bet that people are going to be different yeah. within yeah. that. So that's that's what we do here. Perfect. So first of all, thank you for sparing, making some time to see me. I mean, I was in Vegas for other reasons, but I saw you quoted an article, I think it's for the CMO magazine for in Australia, and I just went, oh, brilliant, because it was about Zappos' approach to personalization. I'm like, send you a note, Alex, I'm going to be there. Can we talk? <laughs> and which is brilliant. So you said yes. But I wanted to ask you about in that the, um, the article it says Zappos is a customer service company that happens to sell shoes. That was the original sort of uh, motto, uh, and which I think is brilliant. But you've extended it, and the article says that happens to sell shoes and clothes and handbags and accessories, but its DNA is customer centricity. So that I mean, I think that's always been a really interesting sort of approach or turning it back to front like we're service first and then we do these things right. um, so how does that approach that sort of orientation affect or inform how you approach personalization for sure for sure later and first of all I cannot take credit for the statement no. it's Tony Shea right? yeah, yeah, it's, of course. The, it's uh, the leader of Zappos and it's it's kind of a brilliant um, very very bold statement right because um, it follows the whole uh, start with why you know Simon Sinek's yeah. why do we exist is to to serve our customers to sure. provide a, a great customer service and then how we do it through you know um, investing in customer service mm-hmm. versus cutting down on that expense sure. right? considering it an expense um, and then at the moment, we happen to sell shoes and clothes. We used to sell other things. We may we may do other things, mm-hmm. just like Apple, right? They were Apple computer first, yep. then they dropped the computer. They're now making uh, watches. They may be doing toothbrushes tomorrow. Who knows? Combs, yep. like personal. cars. You know, where, who yeah. knows where they're gonna go? Exactly. So that that is the that is the DNA. And then in terms of um, personalization, of course, our customer service is unmatched. And that's what makes Zappos Zappos. Yeah. It's when you call on the phone, there's no, like, we pick up right away. Um, there's no limits as to the call time. Some one time, uh, a customer service rep or customer loyalty team 
um, even the name kind of yeah, yeah even the name denotes the what the purpose is mm -hmm. right creating loyalty so that person spoke for more than 10 hours with somebody on the phone they took two bathroom breaks or something like this of course this is um, of course out the, it's an outlier yeah but there's no limits and there's no um, scripts um, the main requirement is to create an emotional connection so to of course help you number one but also to avoid awkward silences not putting you on hold to try to to chit chat yeah, yeah. Um, if somebody is in a rush they don't want to chit chat leave them leave them be and so on so that that being is being sensitive to being that being sensitive that's the personalization and right we we get the best of the best in, in that area okay we train them really well and um, then you get this great experience uh, we make you laugh I mean I was helping some a woman on the phone she was shopping for jeans mm -hmm. and I said straight up I said the my only reference is how my wife wears her jeans she was laughing mm -hmm. we chit chatted we looked at some jeans and at the end I don't know if I helped her but she laughed and she seemed happy right? yeah so so that's the approach and it's it's of course very personal and it's very personalized um, now the opportunity to develop this down the road is to carry this over to maybe the next phone call, right? right. It's, and to, to not to lose that continuity. To, so that's where we're working towards in terms of personalization on the phone so that maybe next time you call I can reference some notes and say how was your trip, right? And, and hit right. this. Even a higher level of personalization would be to request, let's say, I want Adrian again to help me, right? And, and request you as my... So that would be it, you end up getting... So you can actually ask something, or are you going to try and do intelligent routing so you can try and... That's the, that's the future, right? right At this okay. point, it's... But, but that's one of, one of the examples, right? So here's uh, the, the big challenge, and that's why I joined Zappos, was I'm excited about the digital customer experience yeah. as well. And, and now we have hundreds of millions of visitors on the websites, and and millions and millions of customers that don't call. Mm -hmm. So for those folks, how can we recreate that experience, personalized, personal experience on the website? Can I just ask a quick question? So, it's like how much of your, how many, what's the, what's the percentage split of terms of customers transacting on the website and, and actually people kind of calling now? I mean, is it still, is, is still a large part of your business done on the phone over the kind of direct sales on the on the website or is that the, the vast majority of, of the business is on the website right we, yeah, we, we have um, we don't have that many people calling at any one time and that's what makes it possible to provide to do, a great service right. because otherwise at some point yeah. things get you know the scale becomes really a, a challenge so but if it I guess if you take that approach of designing a website so it serves exactly. and then it just translates into making it easy and you know exactly easy to use okay and that and that is the challenge is to how to create or, or design a product that maybe will result in an experience so um, so can can you introduce some kind of dialogue on the website right and I'm not talking about specific solutions like Clippy you know everybody makes fun of Clippy I think the intent was good, and then now is avatars, now chatbots, and all that stuff. These are solutions. Right. That's the how. Focusing on the what, it's a it's a it's a dialogue. It's a back and forth. How, how do you create that? The first step, right? Okay. Is to to say, hey, uh, Adrian, why are you here? Right. And um, and and here here's one point of view of personalization is. There's, I make a distinction between best guess recommendations driven by AI, by machines that, yeah. that observe where you're clicking, what, what you're looking at, and they make a guess. A few challenges with that, the account may be shared, Yes. Right? Uh, so who's looking, first of all. Secondly, what was your mindset when we were looking, right? Yeah. And, and, and so the result of that is, is usually this kind of idiotic thing of, I just bought this pair of shoes, thank you for that, now how about buying another pair of shoes just like that, here's, right, or here's what other people bought. Yeah. Well, first of all, your mindset maybe I don't care what other people buy, and the other one is I just bought these shoes, you want me to buy more? So to contrast this uh, with this uh, is an approach where we understand wh why are you buying these shoes, Right. Wh what's behind it, and then if you understand you're going to a wedding, right, and we know where you're going to a wedding, 
then we can say, well, you know what? Oh, it's a, it's a wedding on the beach. Um, great, right? Uh, lucky you. Did you uh, think of the the sunscreen, right? And right. Uh, or we are going to London, but do you have an umbrella? Right. And, and that's something that we can we can offer you. So appropriate. It's the full picture, right? Okay. It's the understanding what what you want to accomplish. Or for example, if you say you know what I got a promotion now. I want to dress mm -hmm. to to present more authority. Right? Okay. Okay. Um, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? Maybe this color scheme will go. Th whatever mm -hmm. it is, right? Uh, just like a personal stylist would go. You know, if somebody is a bit shorter. Maybe the cut of the uh, of the suit makes a difference. Like sure. if it's cut this way versus this way, it's going to make you make you look taller. So that to me is is personalization, is understanding um, what you want to accomplish, and just just asking a few questions. I have another anecdote when I was buying from a European um, uh, designer bought. Uh, a jacket in the store okay. that was uh, deeply discounted. So my wife uh, said, "You know, buy it." And of course, I would say yes. <laughs> um, and high-end designer bought the jacket. Turned out to be the the, the largest size. Mm -hmm. And then I knew the size, so I bought another jacket online that size. And with that came a nice little leaflet, expensive one looking, right? And spend money on it. And it was uh, talking about gentlemen six 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 three to six six, right? Yeah, and, and you're not six three. Exactly, <laughs> right? Exactly. So, and they were cracking jokes about we never fall short and on and on. So they, they ended up looking like fools because they didn't ask me how tall are you, and I was gonna, yeah. I, I could enter that information. Sure. Right, but they assumed. So that's the that's the thing is. These assumptions. Are, are a big danger and again you cannot average people so what is the the interplay to, to a large extent you can personalize based on common um, common um, data for example if you're in a certain geographic area sure you know everybody experiences the same weather okay mm -hmm. um, you can make some assumptions in terms of the demographic in the area that's fine yeah uh, but the more personal you get you cannot avoid just asking people right and so, the thing that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm really interested in is that, well, first of all, is where are you at in your development of your approach? I mean, is this, uh, what's the, do you see that it's a journey and you're actually, we're, we're, we're starting to figure it out and kind of like to, to, to experiment? Is it, are you early stages and this is, you're, this, you're kind of learning or do you think you're actually quite far down the road and sort of near to the end? or? But, Give me, a, give me right. an idea. It's early. It's early stage. It's at the beginning of the journey, and um, and again, it's a very nice interplay between developing the technology and the algorithms. And we have a brilliant team of data scientists. Right. We have a ton of data. Uh -huh. and we're lucky with with a huge, you know, base of loyal customers. Um, and we're part of um, of Amazon. Yeah. And data privacy and security is a number one priority. Sure. Like it's for Amazon. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the table stakes. There's no question about data privacy and security is, is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Right now, beyond that, so we have those algorithms, but um, we also we talked about the small data and understanding customers. So here's an interesting story of how we came up with an insight. Everybody loves personalization, so you say okay, it's a big company priority and so on. Yeah. So as an empiricist, at some point it dawned on me. We, we collect these uh, voice of the customer surveys. Um, they're on the website, so customers give us feedback, sure. they fill out a very brief questionnaire. And then it dawned on me, wait a minute, we're not measuring how people feel about personalization, the weather, right. right? And let's start, you know, and so I asked the question, how do you feel, how personalized we feel up with this? And then I asked an open-ended question, why? So we looked at some of the data initially and they were giving us extremely high marks, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting, because mm -hmm. I mean, the website is, at this point, is early, uh, and then we read about great customer service and all these reasons that have nothing to do with the way we think of personalization, right? And so we said, okay, now we have to follow it up with a more in-depth research. So we did that more in-depth research and guess what? We found that a big chunk of our customers, um, they say basically, um, yeah, uh, use, use my data. Right. You, you know what I'm doing, use my data. 
another huge chunk of our customers, guess what? They say, forget it. Yeah. I want to be anonymous. Right. Right. What's behind it? Mostly, most likely trust and all that stuff. Trust for business, trust for retail in general. Yeah. This was a big epiphany. And, and a whole bunch of customers are asking us, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? And when they said, uh, who's your number one, you know, um, kind of paragon for personalization, it was Amazon. Yeah. Right, so, so that was a big insight for us. So the, the imperative is before we assume that you want personalization and curation, mm -hmm. we have to ask you. See, yeah, that's really interesting because I think that it creates a, there's this preference, if you like, vector, which, because um, like you said before, there's assumptions around that people want it or they don't want it, or people start to make this kind of, uh, it's like a psychographic sort of preference right. kind of like scale, right. which goes, right. you're completely shut down in private right. Right. or you're completely open right. and there's nothing in between. It's like right. a binary switch, right. Right. which is nonsense. Right. And right. there are gradients sure. in that in terms of sure. some people are like, we're okay with some people sure. and, and not with others. Exactly. Uh, all the way through to somebody that's completely up and or, or on one side and then all the way through to somebody is uh, completely closed on, on everything. Exactly. And some people are, well, I'm going to change my mind depending on what day of the week it is. And, and that's exactly right. So it's just like per interpersonal relations. I'm sure you, you have people in your life that know everything about you. And you have people that you don't want, you don't want to know anything about sure. you. And it may change, yeah. right? I mean, some people may disappoint you and you may you know pull away right sure. so um, it, it's all all a matter of this called trust of um, that's that's been created or ruined by businesses that use your data for their own their own benefit right? yeah and, and even dark patterns even kind of yeah it, it can go all the way right so and, and when we uh, through research we work with designers and so on our message is always you can ask for information from customers, but right away give them something back. Give them value. When you, when you provide the value, give them something little, give them back, and they're going to give you more and more. So I'm absolutely certain that for some people, I mean, some, if somebody's totally paranoid, they're never going to want to, they want to be off the grid, that's fine. But for people that are probably not very trusting initially, when when we see how, uh, when they see that how we help others or maybe we say something like, hey, um, we have so many products, uh, give us a little bit of information, we'll help you like, yeah. narrow down your choice, whatever. With time, I'm sure we can win them over. And so that means, do you do then, in your approach, do you then have a, it's almost like, have somebody on a, on a scale or, or, or yeah, have them classified or tagged as in terms of their privacy or personalization sort of preferences? Have you gone that sort of far to try and group kind of people to then that informs an right. approach? So, no, I mean, not at, not at that point. I think the, it will happen naturally when we have this functionality on the website that that you opt in or opt out or, yeah. or something like this. So yeah. Again, this dialogue. Right. When, you, when you're willing to engage in that dialogue. So, for example, we have links and some of them are buried kind of, to be honest, of giving you feedback. Yeah. Some people look for them, they find them. Yes. They click on them and they engage with the dialogue, yeah. in dialogue with us. It's just like calling on the phone. That's kind of the mo most personal. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, not a lot of people are willing to talk on the phone, right? That's, yeah. and especially with new generations, so on, it's text and they yeah. prefer this kind of offline, off, yeah, yeah. you know. So <coughs> when, when we enable that, kind of dialogue on the website through whatever widgets you call it you know whatever you call it but yeah. then you'll see then you'll see somebody who says cl uh, close this and never show it to me again yeah or they close it three times and they say look we we feel like you you want your privacy do you want us to never show it to you again fine right okay so so that will then lead to the classification the, the natural behavior versus doing a survey and and then the survey would be a hypothetical do you trust companies and then you're going to give us an answer right but then in the in the moment then you get so frustrated maybe looking for things and say let me try and right. then you see the value and then you change your mind right so and, and so what I, it seems to me what you're saying is that many companies many other companies go take go about personalization they make assumptions and then the best guesses without actually but you're saying that's just all it is is best guesses 
and it can lead to pissing people off or being creepy or whatever but actually what you're saying is actually we're trying to take a more dialogue led approach to help the customers then inform us how they would like to be kind of treated that's so one approach that's okay. and, and so the, the two things that you mentioned one is the I mean the best guess is some of them work really well so we have yeah. functionality on the website now that says here's other shoes like this one so this one is out of stock let's say okay. and we have similar styles and that technology works beautifully I, I personally yeah the, these are similar shoes like like this one and I'm gonna yeah I appreciate that or Amazon has people bought also this together with well this. exactly I mean, did, did you kind of, and Amazon has been doing that for for the longest time like that sort of you know right. uh, other things that you bought or connected things that you bought so recommended sort right. of like, I mean do you do does some of the stuff that they do informs uh, the, the approach that, that you For take? For sure, I mean, right. we use a lot of that same technology. Right, okay. Which, but here's the difference is, the technology that's built for the everything store, right, may not may not apply one-to-one -one when, when you work with these really personal, highly personal items, mm -hmm. like clothes and shoes, mm -hmm. like they represent you. Yeah. Versus buying a toaster, okay. right, is, is a little bit different. That may go with, with some something else, or one book goes with a similar book from the same author, or something like this, that, yeah. that works. So in some cases, those best guesses work, but then the creepiness factor is where I, my hypothesis is that it's a matter of trust. Yeah. Creepy, again, is like experience. Like yeah. It's creepy for somebody, not creepy for another person. So you're not going to do that sort of thing where, like, some, you know, I, I said, there was a piece of research that came out, and it was two-sided research, which said they asked, it was talking to customers and then to brand marketers, and they asked customers about sort of some of these brands' personalization efforts, and about 75% of them said, yeah, most of this stuff is creepy because I, I'm on here, I'm trying to do this sort of stuff, and then they track me around the web, exactly. and did all that sort right. of stuff, and then they went and asked the brand marketeers and about two thirds of them yeah. admitted that some of the tactics they use were creepy and it's almost right. a bit like there's that sort of line and, and it's almost a bit like and this is another question I wanted to ask get your opinion on is that um, because some of the technology and some of the tools are so powerful it's easy to step over the, the, the line and, and right. I wondered it's like because of the way that Zappos is and it's very driven by this is what we're about and these are our values is that become your starting point in terms of your filter and sort of helps you understand like what is where's the line and, and this is what we right. don't cross exactly and, and again bring it to interpersonal relations what if there's a, a shadowy figure observing you from the the bushes yeah right and then then offering you some some products down the road you yeah. don't know that person you, you kind of have a feeling they're watching you versus yeah. somebody who you have permission. Okay, yeah, I'll let, let's talk. And um, you go to Nordstrom and uh, there's very helpful uh, personal assistants. Uh, they're, they're friendly. They, they, they observe you and then they see that you're kind of frustrated. They approach you then. right? Or if they see that you want to be left alone, they leave you alone. And then... They offer they offer you help, right? That's so your so your efforts are only going to be are, are limited to visitors to your website, people that can call you, or people that you have emailed sort of contacts sort of ways. Is that it, or does it extend beyond? Well, I mean, it's if we're talking about the digital experience, we can only touch people who visit our websites and mobile yeah. mobile phones, right? So it's um, but you're not going to track people around the around the web. So. I I can't speak for okay, that's for you know marketing <laughs> right. technology and efforts, but it's again it, it has to be if it's perceived to be creepy that that ruins trust yeah. and that's the that's that's the, the that's the the kernel that is yeah okay and so the the other thing I um I was thinking about is that one of the biggest discussions around in this whole personalization and data and privacy and security is actually very much being driven by the um, some of the stuff that's been going on in, in Europe right now with GDPR mm -hmm. and it's almost like there's somebody's taken a big rock <laughs> and dropped it in a, in a, right. in a, and it's just created ripples right, right. around the world I mean it sounds like what we were talking about before and it sounds like you, you're you know data security and privacy is at the very heart of kind of what you guys do and what Amazon does so has have you seen any impact on that well you don't really do business outside the US that much anyway but right. has it has it the advent of GDPR made you 
reappraise kind of where you're at and things, or is it just you've just gone oh, actually we're okay? Uh, no, I, even before that, following Amazon's, I mean for Amazon, privacy data privacy security is number one. Be yeah. Jeff Bezos has said, without this we have nothing. Right. So it's number one priority, and as part of even before we were part of Amazon, this was a huge. Mm -hmm. Priority and now it's almost like a, there's no question about it. There's no right. It's not an option. No, it's not. So pri data privacy and security is in every aspect is ironclad, right? As I mean, as much as possible. And so that's not a that's not negotiable. Then beyond that, it's this whole thing about asking permission and so on. And of course. Reaching out to people, um, they always we only reach out to people who have agreed to to be reached out yeah. via email and so on. When we do our research, we make sure that we kind of follow those those filters that are applied. Mm -hmm. um, when we have people sign up, we have a customer panel, for example, that our customers voluntarily sign up. It's completely voluntary, just to give us feedback. Right. When they say, you know, I, I want out right away. Yeah. It's it's these following the, their wishes essentially. It's it, I mean it does it does seem to me that the the advent of GDPR, particularly in Europe, and then how it's affected other other companies around the world, is making them really. So the good companies that have good intent and have good practices, they've got nothing to worry about. Right. It, it seems a bit, it's it been a big shock to a whole bunch of people that are doing, they're trying to buy data or lists or, you know, cold call people or spam right. email things. And it's like, it's, it feels to me, whilst it might be an inconvenient for some, for some companies, it actually, it feels like it's, it's making, uh, it, trying to clear out some of the bad practices or the, some of the shoddy, exactly. lazy thinking, complacency, and that sort of stuff. That's it. And you know what? I think, Adrian, the, the, the issue is for some companies, the product is the data. Right. Right. And, and our product is shoes and clothes and handbags and accessories. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's the, I think it's much more tricky for companies that, I mean, they, if product is data, they're going to try to sell you data. Yeah. And, and that's the that's the issue. And then yeah. when um, and they always say you know you you sign up for it because it's free, so you kind of implicitly agree. But right, and and at some point, the question is um, how these the data used, and then you get all these conflicts and all these really bad things that can happen. Okay. So what? So tell me about them. Um, what's the what's your Future plans for sort of the the personalization. Well, what's the what's the the story arc or well, the aim for sort of Zappos and kind of personalization? Yeah. You just give us a sense of like what you're trying to where you're what you're trying to achieve as it as it were. I mean, it's again working hand in hand with our colleagues from the big data side, data right. scientists, data science, and that's kind of where the magic happens when we collaborate. Um, and and so it is. Again, using the research, the insights. Yeah. Ask for permission first. Right. And when you design the interface, enable for a dialogue. Don't don't assume. Right. Mm -hmm. And so put put all these put all these things in place and and start small. I mean, for some things it really makes sense for simple questions like are you shopping for yourself? Are you shopping for others? Then when like what's your gender? Like I mean, let us help you narrow down. There's so much choice that, and that, that so that reminds me of something. I had a conversation with somebody uh, a while ago, and they had a they were doing some work in sort of intelligent sort of chatbot type stuff. And the thing that they kind of they, they said to me was, is most of these chatbots, when they're just automated ones, most of them fail really quickly because they, what they don't do is they guess at context. And actually, if you ask the question about context, right. that you end up sort of just narrowing down or actually. Zooming right. in very right. quickly right. on the the success factors, and right. you get in a couple of questions, and then poof, you're right. Exactly, and and in some cases, it's very straightforward. So, for example, in this business, gender matters, right? So, right away, you can if you if you're shopping for 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 yourself, you're a guy. Why should I be looking at all these these high heel shoes, right? Yeah, sure. Um, gender, your size, right? And uh, another kind of you ask for um, some areas where you focus is uh, mm -hmm. sizing. It, yeah. It's a big it's a big issue and um, 
you know, Zappos has been a leader in this business because of the generous return policy because we recognize things don't work out necessarily. And in the store, it's very easy. They bring a bunch of boxes yeah. and they take it back. Yeah. It's fine. It's done. Whereas um, online, you have to return and so on. And, and we make that super easy and, yeah. and, and painless. But it's still inconvenient, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's still a disappointment. So how can we, based on, again, big data, your input, um, again, asking things like, um, I mean, for example, looking at the, the data, but also saying, okay, um, what sizes in these um, brands fit you? Right. Simple questions, and okay, based on that now. And you can take that, and you can match that. Yeah, and you can take the answer, and, and so always ask for, for these. Uh, we're not uh, making you fill out a 40, 60 page questionnaire or something like this. So that's that's one thing, and so then again, refining search again because because we have so much uh, so much choice mm -hmm. and and how can we help you narrow that down so I think that that's where um, so that could be it's almost, like, it's almost like refining if you can refine the context and the, 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 and the, the information and the dialogue right. then you can narrow it down and it becomes increasingly helpful exactly. in, the, in the personalization efforts but it's driven by that dialogue exactly okay. and, and some things are straightforward some things are more tricky like how do you want to feel when you wear these things or Right, and, and then that's the thing you get into the sort of the emotional side of stuff. stuff so it's less about kind of the the functional uh, sort of demographic sort of stuff, right. and then it becomes about the occasion and how they want to feel and all these. So this is this is it. I think if if we get just stuck in the mode of shopping, it's just shopping stuff. has been invented. <laughs> like retail, like online shopping is like a shopping cart. Here's products, find them, put them in the cart, check out. I mean, this is. I, I think it's it's. Uh, kind of a lost battle to try to compete there but what hasn't been done how can you how can you create or design the interface for an experience sure meaning how do you want to feel right it, it's a personal it's a personal thing so again from our research uh, qualitative visits home visits we, we visited you know 20 homes right with people's permission yeah Right. Um, no breaking in. No, uh, <laughs> and we talk to people, and some would say, I mean, a guy who said, you know, I'm in the next stage of my life and career, and I want to change my wardrobe for yeah. this. Or a woman that just had, you know, had a baby, and then she had to change her wardrobe, and, yeah. and then, or maybe she wants to replenish the wardrobe, but it's ultimately about how you want to feel. Yeah. And one of the, the biggest insights was. Um, we talked to this woman and uh, usually you think, you know, you dress how you feel. Well, she said, no, I, I dress because I want to feel a certain way. Yes. So she would put in this unusual, really interesting piece and then people will talk to her. Yes. And that was the intent. Right. See, that, that's very, very different. So, so it, the clothes become or the shoes become a tool exactly. to achieve something. Exactly. They are always. I mean, for, for some people, it's just I need to have something on. Yeah. But for some people, they have, you know, and so in this case, imagine if that was the, the dialogue on the website was, hey, um, how do you feel today? Yeah. And if you say, well, not so, not so great, how, well, let, let me help you feel a little bit different. Okay. Try this. And, and when you're doing all that, I mean, do you think that you're, you'll get to the point where you'll try and use sort of AI and automated sort of tools to help with that sort of dialogue or do you think that a lot of that's still going to be human driven in the in the in the first bit that but with enabled by technology or will you end up sort of increasingly use kind of, sort of automated I think response? automation is where I mean to scale you need automation right. and I think it's absolutely possible I think technology can do anything but the problem has been when you start with the <laughs> with the algorithm yeah and then you try to fit the experience. Yeah. Whereas start with the ideal experience and then write code to match that. Right. So in some cases, I mean, one one of my favorite examples is um, when when we had to reset routers, you know, the, uh -huh. the, the wireless and so on. We would call the company and some some guy looks at the or, or a woman who looks at the series of steps and reads it off to you. Yeah. Unplug this and let me know when you're done. And then one time I was I was called them and it was a computer and said hi I'm a computer and I'm gonna help you. 
and then say do this and then press one when you're done and I said at the end if I haven't help, helped you I've connected to a person I'm like that's great I don't need a person to read these steps a computer can read these steps and it's not the it's not the best use of their time and it's probably well, going to be pretty boring and then I have a person sitting there and I, and I don't want to chit chat at that point yeah. just so this this is perfect right and, and where are the limits so if you have the ideal experience in mind like you're emulating an interpersonal interaction yeah at some point, you, I mean, and sometimes you can hit this whole thing of the uncanny valley where it's kind of like person but not really, so it gets the creepiness factor. Yeah. But how far, that's the challenge, how far can you go to emulate a personal experience um, with technology? And I think it's, it can be done, it's just the efforts are not at this point focused on that. They, people say, well, Clippy was, was done, ha, 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 you know, it was... Funny, yeah. so they dismiss it. Yes. Or they do chatbots poorly. They say it doesn't work. Again, focusing on the how, and and then not um, and dismissing the what because of that. Yeah, that's fine. So if I was to say to you, Alex, that you know, I have there are probably people listening into this conversation, and they're in the service experience sort of space and they're thinking about personalization and they're thinking about making trying to make their their efforts kind of better um but they sometimes struggle with that they're not getting necessarily the right sort of outcomes mm -hmm. i mean what sort of advice would you give to people based on what you've learned well one your research and also what you've learned right. with the whole zappers experience so far sure absolutely adrian so it's it's a very simple very powerful message it's understand your customers as people and work with the technology side to the technology is the how. Yeah. Figure out the what and understand your customers, people. And I have to give credit to um, an Italian design professor, Roberto Verganti, who uh, I met when I was at Intuit. Yeah. And he was talking about, uh, you know, if you want to really innovate, forget about the users. And his whole point was users are not the people. The yes. caller is not the person. The person who clicks on the website uh, the person who converts is not the person. It's people in different aspects, in different contexts. Who's the person behind that, mm. right? And understand, and that's why you need you need to bring in psychology. You need to bring in that human side. You need to bring in home visits and go and see people exactly. in, the, in their real kind of like right. their, their and, real life. Exactly, and, come, and then you need to then have the these are anecdotes, maybe case studies, and you say how does it apply to, and then you have to bridge it. Sure. Do the inferential statistics and all that, because you're not designing for just 20 people; you're designing for millions. Mm. So that's that's where, uh, but without doing that combination, it's you're kind of almost like designing for for failure in, in many ways. Or you're actually not designing; you're not optimizing your, you know, the the the, the, the possibilities. You're almost like limiting the possibilities. Exactly. If you see people as just a user or a caller or a buyer or whatever, then you're not seeing the whole person. Then Definitely you're not it. seeing the whole po the whole opportunity. Right, exactly. And then that's where you're doing the average coffee, which, <laughs> which is going to kind of suck for everybody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, uh, on the personalization stuff, I mean, is there anything else that you, you think that people should pay attention to uh, that, that we sort of not covered before I ask you my last question? I think, I mean, that's what we, we talked about things. The most important thing is just pay attention to the person. Perfect. So my last question, Alex, I always ask, uh, well, most of the time I ask at the end of these, uh, these, these interviews, and I've done an excess of about 260 of them now. Wow. And the question is this, is there anything you would like to shamelessly plug? No, I, I don't <laughs> think so. I mean, it's... Buy shoes from Zappos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you must <laughs> well, I don't know. Brilliant. I mean, I, that's which is not great for me because I, you know, I live in the UK and you're not. Right. You, you don't. Right. You right. don't trade outside of, uh, um, right. outside the US. But hey, hey, then never mind. But um, Alex, thanks very much. That's been uh, really interesting and, uh, and and insightful. And thanks for your time sure. and sharing your thoughts with us today. Absolutely. Adrian. Thank you. Well, that's it for another interview. I really hope you enjoyed it. Now, every time I complete one of these interviews, I learn something new, and I try and incorporate that new learning into my writing, my speaking, my workshops, and the consulting that I do for my clients. If you're interested, you can find out more about how I work with clients over at adrianswimsco.com. But one final thing before I go, 
please consider le- heading over to iTunes or whichever podcast platform you choose to use and do leave a review. Every little helps, as they say. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for listening and do listen in again. All the very best.